In this video, we're going to look at the covariance of the empirical distribution function, uh, sometimes called the empirical CDF function. And this is the uh, what we're going to try to show, that the covariance between uh, two values of the empirical CDF um, is equal to 1 over the minimum of f of x, f of y, minus f of x, f of y. Now again, this is the empirical distribution of a random sample size n from a population f. <clears throat> Let's just jump right in. Let's define a function, I call it the sine function, where if the input is greater than or equal to 0, it's 1. If it's not otherwise, it's 0. So now the empirical CDF um, is the number of x's and the number in the sample less than or equal to that value there divided by n. That's the definition of the empirical. But it can be rewritten as this indicator function. It's the it's the um, the sum of 1 to n of sine of little x minus each data point in our sample divided by n. So this is only a 1 if this is positive, meaning the xi is less than x. So it counts the number in the sample less than x, which is the CDF. So now let's, uh, let's look at the expected value of this function here, which is, um, you know, you plug this in here, and then you can take the expectation through the sum, and you get this. Well, this only takes on two values, and the expected value of that is the, uh, it's the value that it can assume times the probability of assuming that value. So it's, it's zero times the probability of less than zero, but anything times zero is zero, and then it's one times the probability of it being positive, but one times anything is just this, so it's the positive the probability of being positive, which is what this is. And then if you take this to the other side and then kind of rewrite it, it's the probability that xi is less than x. Well, that is the uh, population CDF function. Well, now there's no index in here, and so we're going to add this n times. So it's going to be n times this. Well, the n's cancel, leaving just f of x. Okay. So what we're, what we're doing is building piecewise to this covariance function. So now let's look at the probability that xi is less than x and xj is less than y. So if they are not equal, this is independent and can be broken apart, which that's just the probability, you know, f of x. And this is uh, f of y. Okay. But when xi equals xj, the probability that xi is less than x and xj is less than y, well, that only condition is that they're both less than whatever the minimum is. So that is this. It's the, the answer is the minimum of f of x and f of y when they're equal because it's the only way to satisfy both requirements. Um, so that's this. So, and then we're going to use these facts in a, in a second here. So now let's look at um, the expected value of this product. So then you plug in the values for this and, and that. Then um, um, the n can be taken out front and then the, these can be combined to this. And then that expected value can, it's a, it's a linear operator, so it can be taken into the sum. So we get this. Now, this expected value, you know, the expected value of this is the, the values it can assume times the probability of assuming that value. And each of these are indicators. So it's this piece is 0 or 1, and this piece is 0 or 1. And so if either one of them are 0, then that can, doesn't contribute to this expected value. So they have to both be one. Well, the only, and then the probability that they're both one and um, is this probability, probability that, um, oh, 
this that this is positive zero and this is positive um, well then the X can be taken to the other side and this XJ can be taken to the other side so now when they are when so, so then we have to think about when XI is different than XJ then they're independent and then if but if they're equal then um, that's saying the same you know X greater than XI and and Y greater than XJ well we have to look at them differently so when I equals J then we get this so this is the probability the probability is the minimum of whatever this is and then when I and J are not equal then those are independent can be broken apart and it's this product well there's no index here so we're adding it in time so it's in times this and one of those ends cancels so we, we're left with this and then here there are um, um, in times n minus one of these so then one of the ends cancels with this and it's and we're left with this okay so now we have enough pieces to look at the covariance so this covariance is um, by definition expected value of this product minus this expected value of the the product the product of the expected values and then this piece we just calculated and then we we calculated each one of those so this one um, is this so that's where we got that and then each one of these separately is f of x and f of y well um, th these two pieces want like um, when you combine these then it turns into this so the f of x the n over n will cancel with one of that just leaving minus one over n of this which is what this is anyway and that's what we needed to show and so that's the answer and uh, that's all i have today hope you enjoyed it if you did please like it uh, subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye